Hey guys, welcome back. I want to go over the observer pattern we talked about in class last time. Here's the sequence diagram that corresponds to that pattern. Basically the idea is you have some observers that subscribe to be notified when something happens. An object that's observed is the one responsible for doing the notification. So a third party comes in and does something with this object. The object, having gotten two subscriptions, now must notify those two subscribers that the thing has happened before replying to the third party that it's done whatever the thing is that was to be done. So these observers therefore get notified anytime this thing happens, whatever that thing happens to be. So, um, and how do we actually implement that in TypeScript? Well, um, one way is to, let's see, I can just replace this with a class diagram <clears throat> that illustrates the basic idea. In this case, in the example where I'm going to work out, the observed class just has a simple value, a number. It could be anything. It could be a list. It could be a user interface. It could be uh, some kind of complicated data structure, whatever it is. But in this case, it's the simplest possible thing I could think of, which is just a number. It keeps a private list of observers. Now, that's not part of its public interface. It knows internally um, that it has these observers, and it uses that simple array data structure to keep track of the uh, objects that need notification. It has a public method called do something, which just does something to the value in this case, since it's a simple value. But it could be any public method that the object makes available for people to use. Then it's got a subscribe and an unsubscribe method. The subscribe method takes an observer object, and the unsubscribe method takes an observer object. And, and basically, the way it works is an observer calls the subscribe method and passes itself in as uh, the observer. The observed object, the way we're going to do it, is just going to throw that observer at the end of this list. And then it's got a notify observers method. It's a private method that it calls that goes through the observers that have subscribed and notifies them. Now the observer has a single public method. It could have other public methods, but it must at least have this public method, which is to notify it that something has happened. And the way I cooked it up, the notify method takes the value of the observed object. So that's how that works. Let's, uh, <clears throat> let's talk about code. So now we want to implement <clears throat> this observer pattern in a simple example. So I'm just going to march down the class uh, diagram here and try to implement as best I can, and then we'll see how we do. So first, I want to make an observer class. Of course, you could define an interface as well if you want to uh, have a nice, clean separation between implementation and design. But uh, Let's just keep this simple, and uh, we want a constructor that is going to uh, define the name. <clears throat> so the constructor will take uh, a simple name argument. Oh, I need an implementation. Of course, when you declare uh, a variable in the constructor to have public or private uh, status, then it'll automatically fill that in. So you don't actually need to implement the constructor directly. So let's uh, so that takes care of the constructor. Let's um, let's do the notify and it requires a number and the implementation is simply going to be uh, to log out that I've been notified. So console.log um, how about this? Dollar name was notified. Notified with dollars value. I think that'll do it. <clears throat> that's all I really require. I think that's really the whole class. So obviously in a real situation you want to do more than that, but just for testing the concept of an observer and observed class, that'll that will give us the information we need that the, the thing was called. So let's go ahead and define the observed class. 
class. Um, first of all, we're going to have value, and we're just going to set it equal to zero. Boom. And then we'll have a private um, observers, which will uh, be an array of observers. Let's see. Did I spell something wrong? Oh, I gotta initialize it. There we go. Okay. Trying to figure out why I wasn't happy there. Um, then let's define the do something. So we'll make public do something, which won't have any arguments, but we'll just increment uh, this value. <clears throat> okay. And. Um, So that might be enough, except it doesn't do anything with the observers, and it doesn't uh, allow the observers to subscribe or unsubscribe. So let's go ahead and implement subscribe, unsubscribe, and notify observers. So they have to be public in order for them to be callable. So subscribe, and we're going to get an object, which is an observer, right? And all I have to do is... Um, update my list of observers. Okay, that's easy. Now, um, what about unsubscribe? It also takes an object, which is an observer, right? But it has to find if the observer is in the list and then remove it if it is. So the easy way to find something in a list um, We'll say let i um, be equal to this observers dot index of, and we'll pass in the object we want the index of. That would be the object that's unsubscribing. Now, the way index of works is it returns a negative one if it can't find the thing, and returns the index a zero to the length of the list if it can. So we better check to make sure i is greater than negative 1. In other words, it found it. Of course, you have no control over what someone calls you, but they can call you with any object at all as long as um, it's an observer. It doesn't have to be one that you have in your observers list, so there's no guarantee that it's going to be there. Um, but if it is there, then we want to remove it. So the easiest way to do that is to use the splice method. I'll pass in the index of the observer and the number of items to delete is one. And, uh, and that should do it. Okay, then all I have left is the notify. So that's a private method. I'm looking at my class diagram here. Um, it's notify observers, notify observers. And uh, it takes no arguments. And all I wanna do is to iterate through the observer list and notify each of the observers. There's many ways to do that. Um, one easy way is to use the for of method, which is uh, one of the more recent additions to ECMAScript. But I can just say for uh, const observer of this.observers. And what that will do is iterate through the list of observers and let obs be the uh, individual observers, and then I just want to call the notify method with this dot value for each of those observers, because I'm going to call the notify method of the observer. The notify method takes a value, so I'll pass this value in, and that should do it. Okay, first of all, let's just see if that compiles. Boom, it does. I got lucky. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and have it do something. So if I say let a let a be a new uh, observed, right? And let b be a new observer, uh, and it takes a name. Let's say b, and let c be a new observer, c. So I'm going to say, um, let's subscribe, a.subscribe, b. That 
subscribes B to observe A, and then we'll tell A to do something. So that should notify, let's see if that works, that should notify B. Uh, that did not work. Oh, wait. Ha! That's why. I'm incrementing the value, but I never notify the observers, so I have to notify observers. Now let's try it. Oh, that did not work. Okay. Uh, aha. So I have to say this.name, because name is a public property of the observer. Okay. I didn't do that right. I'm surprised the compiler didn't catch me on that earlier, but okay. But, so B was notified with one. If I did something again, B should get notified with two. Oh, okay. Now, what if between A the, doing something the first time and doing something the second time, I subscribed C? <clears throat> so by the time it does something the second time, now it's got two subscribers. Let's see what that does. So notice B was notified with one, B was notified with two, but C was notified with two, and that's because C subscribed after the first do something, and so there were two subscribers, and so two notifications. Now I can test unsubscribe. Let's unsubscribe B, and then let's do something again. And this time we should get right. So B was not notified with two, but C was, because C had not yet unsubscribed. So that basically works. Very good.